Hi, this is Jan from Let's Build Shopify. And in today's video, I will give you a quick overview on Shopify meta fields, also sometimes referred as Shopify custom fields, so that you can start using them today. And let's get started. All right. So in my last video, we were working on adding some tabs to the product page so that you can maybe have the description in one tab and then some additional details about the product in the second tab and maybe some information on the delivery in the third tab. But the problem with this setup right now is that all these values are hard coded into the theme file. And we can also have a quick look on that. So for example, here we have the first tab with the product description, which is already dynamic. So that's great. But here we have the second tab, which contains this HTML table with two rows. And we display the material and the weight. But since these values are hard coded into the theme file, they will appear on every single product page. And so we can find them on the product page for the vanilla candle, but also on other product pages, for example, for this pillow. And this doesn't make too much sense right now. So I think this is a good use case to introduce meta fields to display this information dynamic. And let's see how this works. So the first advice I can give you when it comes to Shopify meta fields is to use an app. And I mean, there are ways to manage your meta fields without any app, but for the sake of simplicity, and especially if you're building this for someone else, then you want to provide an easy to use and good looking interface. And so I went to the Shopify app store and simply searched for meta fields. And you can see there are plenty of apps and they come with different pricing, but also with different functionality. So for example, some have CSV import, which might be interesting if you have hundreds or even thousands of products. Um, but for this video, we will stick to the meta field guru app because at the point I record this, it is totally free and it comes with a very intuitive interface and they have some great features to come in the future. So I already went ahead and installed that app to the Shopify development store. And now we can have a look inside the app. So let's open it. And once this loads, you will be presented with all the objects that can have meta fields assigned to them. So for example, we have collections, products, and maybe even blog posts. But as we were interested in products for this video, let's open the product section. And right here, you will find the list of all the products available on your store. So let's search for the vanilla candle. And you can see that it doesn't have any meta fields right now. So let's create a new meta field. And now we have to define a namespace and a key. And with these two attributes, we can later access the meta fields value. So let's give it a namespace of details because it belongs to the product details. And for the key, we can use material. And then we have the value type on the right. You can leave this to string most of the times. And down below, you can add the actual value for this meta field. So as we are editing the candle, Let's do beeswax. And then we will create another meta field. And we will also use the key details, uh, the namespace details, sorry. And for the key, we can use weight. And I think for a candle, 200 gram will be realistic. So let's save these two meta fields. And then we can go back to all the products. And just to show that everything is working, we also have to add some meta fields to the pillow. So it was this one here. And now we can create the same meta fields for the pillow. So again, namespace details. And the first key is material. And I think we can add cotton. And then for the second meta field, which will be weight, we can add maybe 350 gram and then save those two meta fields. And now we will go back to the Shopify theme files. So this is the content for tab two. And now we will simply replace this hard coded value with our new meta field. So let's do opening curly brackets and then product dot meta fields dot and now follows the namespace. So we called it details and then follows the meta field key, 
which is material in this case. Then closing curly brackets. And now we can copy this excess and paste it to the weight. And as the weight lies within the same namespace, we only have to adjust the key, which is weight. And now we can save this template. And as we check back on the front end, we can now refresh these two product pages. And we should see that in the details tab, we have now material beeswax for the candle and weight 200 gram. And for the pillow, this should be material cotton and weight 350 gram. Perfect. So now it's dynamic. Okay, one last thing I want you to be aware of now is that not all products have these meta fields defined right now. So for example, if I go to the wooden fence, you would see that in the details tab, it has neither a value for material nor for weight. And so I think it will be a good idea to wrap this output into a conditional statement and only put out the value or the row if a value exists. So therefore I will simply grab the meta field and above the table row, I can now perform a check if the product meta field is not blank. Then I want to put out the table row and down below I will terminate the if statement. So end if. And now this should only be visible when the meta field value is defined. So let's save this. And once I refresh the page for the wooden fence, we should no longer see the row for material. But we still have the row for weight because we didn't perform the same check for the second row. And so, yeah, I think it will always be a good idea to perform such a conditional statement if you're putting out meta fields. And yeah, I hope you like this brief introduction to Shopify meta fields. And now you can go ahead and try to implement whatever it is that you want to build. And if you are using meta fields for a collection, let's say, then you would simply replace product.meta fields with collection.meta fields. And I've also seen some people that like to add HTML markup to the meta field instead of a single value. And you could also try to do this, but then I would recommend keeping the HTML short and not putting an entire section into a meta field because this will be hard to maintain. And last but not least, I want to thank you for watching. And if you have questions, you can always leave them down in the comment section. I will respond to every single comment I get. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. And then I hope to see you in the next. Bye.